This video is kindly sponsored by Trainwell, but more on them in just a minute. A recent study done in 2023 says that 70% of Americans are unhappy with the organization and clutter in their homes. And a further study in 2022 stated that 78% of Americans would say that the clutter in their home is causing stress. So today we're gonna talk about four habits, lessons, philosophies that I want you to start embedding in your life that have absolutely nothing to do with decluttering. For me, often I would go and buy things. I was the queen of Target, the empress of a thrift store, and I knew where every good yard sale was gonna be every single weekend. But to change that persona of myself was incredibly difficult. When you build an image up of what you are as a person, your character traits, changing those can be very painful and strange. So stepping away from buying things and changing my mindset took some effort. Some of the things that I put into place was just not going shopping as often, creating lists for myself of things that I was really looking for and those would be the only things that I would be searching when I'm at the store. Now, while I still love thrift store shopping, creating a list and having a running idea of the things that you actually need will stop you from buying all those little fun trinkets that we can find along the way. Also, I just realized that I had to start asking myself some really good questions in order to counteract that immediate I need this, I want this, I'm gonna buy it, that we often hear in our society. So questions like, why do I need this? Do I have something else that's very similar to this? Or would I buy this if it wasn't on sale? If it was full price, would it be worth it to me? And how long do I imagine myself using this item? When I do have to get rid of this item, especially large pieces of furniture, how am I gonna get rid of it? How easy is it gonna be to sell this or give it away, or is it just gonna be trash? These are all fantastic questions, and the more often you stop yourself and question yourself, the quicker you start to realize that nine times out of 10, no, you don't actually need that. And it starts to help rewire some of those neurons going on in our brain. And I will honestly say that when I go shopping now, buying things is not giving me this huge dopamine hit like it used to that is slowly drained away because I am able to slow down this fast purchase. I'm able to get dopamine from other sources than just from shopping. So the second practice is probably one of the hardest for me, and that is taking time to practice some minimalist habits and scheduling them into your day, like going for a walk, reading a book, sitting in quiet and exercising. And that's where today's sponsor, Trainwall, has really been able to support some of the big goals that I've set for this year. As a busy mom and entrepreneur, often I feel like I have all these balls juggling in the air and often I am the first one to fall off the wagon because I will just let exercise slip by the wayside. But I recently just met with Alexis, who is my trainer on this app called Trainwell. And we immediately bonded over how she's also a mom and she's working from home and the struggles. And so she is building me a daily workout routine. I said I only wanted to do about 15 minutes and I didn't wanna to have to buy any exercise materials, equipment to bring into my house. And she was so understanding and immediately has reached out to me with what my new plan should be, targeting some of the real goals that I have for this next year. So if you're looking for a relationship to build with somebody who is going to know exactly what you need in your exercise routine, and you are going to be able to exercise in a very limited amount of time, but get the most benefit out of it, then Trainwell is a fantastic app that you can try. I'm gonna leave a 14 day unique link down in the description so that you two can check out this amazing experience meeting with somebody who is going to help you target your goals. Using a capsule wardrobe can immediately start your minimalist lifestyle without having to do any decluttering. So there are tons of videos about building capsule wardrobes, but here are a few highlights. I want you to focus on those clothes that you're seeing you're wearing over and over again. Even flipping around your hangers has really helped me to build a capsule wardrobe because you'll notice once you flip them back around, these 10 pieces of clothing are the ones that you're wearing day in and day out, and often the other 90% you barely touch. So creating a capsule wardrobe is gonna help you focus 
in the morning, which is something I always need, but it's also going to streamline the process. It's going to make it so much easier for you to wake up in the morning, get motivated to get out of bed without feeling that oh tug of I'm not going to ever find anything that matches anything that goes together. You're going to pick some really good colors for you, colors you really enjoy wearing. It doesn't have to be all black and white. It can be a few different patterns even that can go together. So for me, I really love wearing greens and blues. So I fill in some of the openings in my capsule wardrobes with greens and blues because they make me happy. But having a few pairs of pants and a few tops at a time, and then just being comfortable knowing that after you have picked out maybe 30 pieces of clothing and jewelry and shoes that you wanna have in your capsule wardrobe, it is totally perfectly fine to go through and add a few more pieces as you are feeling comfortable with your capsule wardrobe. I think that was one of the biggest stigmas, scary things about capsule wardrobes for me when I was first starting because I felt like, well, what if something comes up and then I want this other piece of clothing? It's a great thing about building a capsule wardrobe. You can add to it as much as you want. No one's gonna know or care. But as you're creating your capsule wardrobe, you don't have to think of all those decisions of the clothes that you want to declutter. You can start right away living a little bit simpler. If you're new here, my name is Becky Truda and this is Minimal Ease, a community that is extremely supportive and welcoming to anyone that is either just interested in a minimalist lifestyle or is already chasing that journey. And if you are here already, decluttering, organizing, and living a simpler life with us, then throw a heart emoji down below. And the fourth thing that you can build in right now that has nothing to do with decluttering is to streamline your daily routines. So one big one that I wanna highlight is your cleaning routine. Something that was very difficult for me as somebody with ADHD, I often got very distracted. I often thought that I either had to clean my whole house or I couldn't clean anything. I had to do all the laundry or I couldn't do anything. Well, streamlining that process in several ways is going to help you to feel like you're not having to clean your entire house on a Monday and spend all day working. The first thing that I want you to do on your cleaning routine is I want you to notice the things that bother you the most. So for me, it was always vacuuming. I had to vacuum every single day because I have two dogs and a child. And so yes, I have hair, mud and everything in between when it comes to my floors. And so what I did is I have very easy vacuuming routines. I have a Roomba, actually an off-brand Roomba, which I'll link below, but she does my main floor every single day. I can just press the button or I can do it on my phone and walk out the door and I know my main floor is taken care of. The other vacuum that I have is upstairs and that one is a handheld battery powered vacuum. That has streamlined the process of vacuum upstairs for me because I don't have a cord or a heavy oversized vacuum that I have to lug around that's very irritating. I have this light, easy vacuum that I just throw a battery in it and go. Having less clothes so you don't have as much laundry to do. Having less dishes out, if you can't get rid of a lot of your excess or you're not comfortable doing that yet, then just leave out enough for your family to each have a plate, maybe one extra. So when you're washing your dishes, you're not having all this excess all of the time. Because let's be honest, if you have all the excess stuff in your kitchen, it's gonna get touched, it's gonna get moved around, you're gonna feel like you're gonna have to wash it, and it's taking up a lot of space. So cutting down on some of the essentials that you feel like you need in your kitchen and your wardrobe will definitely help you streamline your cleaning routine. So something recently that I wanted to build into the routine of our home is I got a little container for my daughter to have her hairbrush, to have her toothbrush and toothpaste and have a little mirror and her little spray for her hair so that she has all the things she needs in the morning and it's easy for her to see exactly what she needs to get done when she's in the bathroom. Instead of searching around for the hairbrush, even though we all know where it is, it's just one extra step. So learning about the people in your house and how you can simplify some of these routines. All right, friends, those are just four things that I have built into my life to help my life run smoother, to help me maintain a more minimalist lifestyle without including any of the decluttering that we do from day to day. So if you enjoy learning about minimalism, then make sure you go ahead and hit one of these videos right here and continue on your journey. Good luck, friends.